Okay, so for me, we're now we're, this is where it really gets interesting. This is something that I love about doing therapy, and I'm going to tie it into what we're talking about here with the cognitive triangle and CBT, and then we'll talk about with depression and, and work through that. But what we're going to touch on now is, is what's referred to as cognitive distortions, okay? And cognitive distortions are common ways of thinking that can be irrational and often negatively impact people's feelings. So remember when we were talking about core beliefs and we can pick them up just from random uh, interactions with people growing up they're reinforced over time we were just kind of looking at different situations and then we're uh, you know then we start to apply that thinking to to new situations but here's the thing and then we looked at okay we could have alternative thoughts could that could change about the same situation that could change the way we think change the way we feel and change the outcome of the situation. But he, here's the thing, remember we were talking, these are core beliefs that most people have. Most people aren't aware that they have these automatic thoughts and then they happen very quickly. And most people don't notice that they believe them to be 100% true, even though they may only be partially true or they may not be true at all. So it's gonna be very important to, um, to look at this and I, I will tell you everyone experiences these things in one way or another so when you start to look at this stuff you get an opportunity to learn and you you can look at how it's impacted things in your life and I'm just gonna tell you again when I'm working with someone in therapy I always have a really a great time I mean I I mean not get all excited because a lot of times we are working through stuff that you know is very traumatic I, I do a lot of trauma work with people people that are very depressed people that are very anxious so we're, we're working through very emotional emotionally painful things but as we start to work through these distortions, they start to see a bigger perspective. And I'm gonna give you an example before we wrap this up, but I wanna comment on the most common categories. So CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy um, has like specific categories of the cognitive distortions. And then well, we can just talk about how they fit in. But the, the first one is magnification and minimization. Uh, it could be where you exaggerate something or and, and, and make it much more important than it actually was. Or you can minimize something even though it was really important. Uh, there's overgeneralization where you start to make very um, far-reaching assumptions from just a single, you know, uh, just a single event. Like you, you start to apply it to everything. There's magical thinking where you believe one action is related to another situation when, in fact, there's no relation to it at all or very minimal relationship. You can personalize something or personalization uh, belief that one is responsible for events outside of their control. Uh, there's another one called jumping to conclusions, where you interpret the meaning of a situation without any evidence. There's emotional reasoning where where you believe that emotions reflect the way things really are versus them just being a certain way. Uh, there's a lot, people use a lot of should statements. Uh, I believe um, things need to be a certain way or should be a certain way. And then there's all or nothing thinking where you know people use absolutes. You'll hear them use the word always, never, and every. So I know I just threw a lot of stuff at you. You guys can go do a quick internet research and you could look at you know, uh, cognitive distortions in these categories and try to, to get ideas of it you know, and, and better understand it. But let me, do, and I don't wanna just go through too much of that stuff because you can get it on your own. But he, here's my favorite example of what a cognitive distortion is and, and I think it's very simplistic. So it, it may be able to help you, um, you know, better conceptualize what is that that we're talking about and then I can kind of tell you or I will tell you what it looks like in therapy okay so think about it like this when we're talking about your core beliefs like things that you believe they're automatic to be true all the time if I asked you I said hey have you ever seen a sunrise or a sunset all of you are gonna tell me uh, yeah happens every day and then we're gonna go I'm gonna say, okay, tell me about it. You're gonna tell me about the experience. What's your favorite? And you're gonna say, oh, I love sunsets. I just like to be able to see the sunset. I don't know, someone might say, I like to see the sunrise. They like to get up early. So what if I said to you, uh, I think you're totally wrong. You've never seen the sun rise and you've never seen it set. Now you're gonna look at me like I'm totally clueless, which is fine, because I could be. But think about it like this. When we were in elementary school, probably close to sixth grade, I don't know, they started teaching about us about the solar system, right? They said the sun is in the center of the solar system and the planets rotate around. The sun never moves. Every day I think I see the sun move across the sky. 
but the sun never moves, okay? So the point I'm trying to make here, I could believe it to be true that the sun is moving and I could see it and then try to give proof, but it doesn't and that's the reality of it. So when it comes to cognitive distortions, people's belief in something, in the, in the different categories that I gave you just previously, they believe them to be true no matter what, okay? Here's the benefit of working with a therapist. And right now we're talking about in CBT. So I'm giving you this information. Again, I'm not saying you need therapy. I'm not saying to go to therapy. I'm saying this information can help you and better understand how therapy works. So when I sit down with someone and they tell me they're depressed or they're anxious or someone can tell me, hey, I've experienced significant trauma and let me tell you what it was. As we start to break down what they've experienced over their lifetime, and I ask them what the situation was like. How did you feel in that situation? What were you thinking in that situation? How did you respond to that situation? And as we start to break thing these things down, we start to notice mistakes that have happened along the way. Things that they could have interpreted to be true that maybe weren't. Um, they could have, and from those thoughts, certain feelings could have resulted. I, and I'm going to go in a little bit more detail with this later, and I'm going to use um, you know some better examples. But think about like people that have experienced trauma. It could be someone, let's say, that was robbed, someone that was raped. Uh, it could have been a, a, an accident, a car accident, you know, thing that wasn't even intentional. It could have been a natural disaster. First thing people do, they blame themselves. If I wasn't there, if I would have done something different, this would have never happened. Okay. Is that a cognitive distortion, right? If I, maybe there's some truth. If I wasn't there, it couldn't happen. Well, that's true, but the fact was I was there. But that, what, what we have is we have someone that's assuming 100% control of something that maybe they had zero control over what was taking place. So when we start to look at the, at the details of a situation, they can start to identify like there were certain things I had a control of, then there may have been certain things I didn't have control of. Could I have prevented this? Maybe I had been living my entire life thinking I could have prevented this from happening, and then I started to find out there was no way I was gonna prevent this from happening because I couldn't have prevented myself from being there because I was there. And I couldn't have prevented this, this, and this, so maybe I'm not 100% responsible. I was taking all the blame. And maybe if I'm not as responsible for the entire thing, I'll take responsibility for what I owe, I start to see things a little bit different. And instead of being stuck and in, in hating myself, maybe going back to a core belief, I'm stupid, I was at fault, it was a huge mistake on my part, maybe I start to have, and I feel terrible about myself, maybe I start to feel a little bit different. Maybe I start to feel a little bit more compassion for myself. And I start to think about maybe caring for myself, maybe looking at myself in a little bit different way, and I start to move towards coping instead of blaming. So that's an example of cognitive distortions. I'm going to get to a little bit more in our next part about those cognitive distortions, and hopefully it can kind of help you understand a little bit more how that works in therapy. But just trying to summarize what we looked at, okay? CBT, it's used for depression. It's, very, it's been around since the 60s. It's been very widely researched, and we can understand it in a, it's a theoretical orientation that is used for, to help people in psychotherapy. Having knowledge about this stuff doesn't make me immune to emotional issues. I'm not immune, I've got this knowledge, I can have stuff happen to me any day of the week. But having this knowledge, one, may help me to prevent walking down a road that could make it more difficult. The other thing is, if I'm in therapy, I can better understand where things might be going. So that's the point of this video, is trying to get you guys to better understand how CBT works, um, you know, the foundation of it, how it could work for depression, what to expect in therapy, and simplistically, you got a situation, you've got your thoughts, you've got your feelings, and you've got behaviors. With the thoughts, there's you know, um, automatic thoughts. They are internalized quickly. They happen very fast. They can be based on core beliefs. These core beliefs can develop at an early age and over a lifetime, and they could be filled with cognitive distortions, meaning they are not 100% accurate, but we are treating them as if they are 100% accurate. And then if I work in therapy, I can, with a good therapist that is, I can actually slow this stuff down and start to look and see where I might be distorted, like some of my thinking may be distorted. When I change those a little bit, my feelings may change, and then my response to things may change as well. 
So again, I'm Dr. Jerry Grosso, Insight Psychology and Addiction. I hope you enjoyed this video, and um, like I said, I'm gonna follow up a little bit more on some cognitive distortions as far as they work with specific situations that I get in therapy.